Thank you for joining us today. We hope this teaching inspires you, builds your faith, and gives you tools for everyday life. We encourage you to visit us at mbcocala.com to discover more about the life-changing ministry at Meadowbrook, as well as convenient ways you can partner with us financially in helping people move from where they are to where God wants them to be. Enjoy the message. All right, good morning. How's everybody? Good, good. Speaking of all the fields, how many of you feel better now than when you first got here today? I know I, know I do. Amen. Amen. Hey, go ahead and stand with me. We're going to pray together right now. Let's call upon the name of the Lord with confidence that he hears us. And he's promised that if he hears us, he's going to answer. So let's lift our hands to the Lord this morning. Father, we love you today. We thank you. Thank you for your presence. Thank you that we're here in the Lord's house on the Lord's day to honor you. Lord, that sets our lives, our week up to be blessed according to your plan, God. And so as we come today to honor you, we also come needing you, God. We need to hear from you. We need your touch. I pray, Lord, that in this time and in this place, Lord, that you would touch, that you would speak, that you would heal, that you would strengthen, that you would encourage, that you would give answers. God, that you would just show yourself strong in the lives of each of your people today. I pray that you'd help me to deliver your word in the right way today as we cover a very important subject, touching so many lives. Thank you that you give us light, you give us understanding today, and that you, you help us in this. And I pray that when everything is said and done today, that you, Jesus, the Lord of our life, the head over all things to this church, that you would be pleased, that you would be honored and that these, your people, every single one of them would be helped today. That's our prayer. In Jesus' name, and everybody said amen, amen. and amen. How about a huge welcome for our East Campus today. Can we welcome them? God bless you, East. It's going to be a good service. Also, let's give it up big time for our online campus as well. God bless you guys all over the place. God bless you. Peace to your house. You may be seated. You may be seated. We just welcomed the East Campus, and I want to let you know that next Sunday we're actually celebrating the one-year anniversary of East Campus. So come on, let's give it back up again. Go East! We're excited to, you know, just to celebrate all that God has done. We've, we've seen His incredible favor and, and His fruit in so many lives. We're very excited about what's going on over there, and so... Uh, uh, they're with us for so many events and always with us, you know, by way of uh, technology. Thank God for that. Amen. Hey, and ladies, tonight is heart of a woman, and you will want to be here. Listen, I live, I live with the lady who's going to be teaching tonight, and uh, I have watched her. I've watched her labor and process and pray and just dig in, and uh, I'm telling you what, you do not want to miss tonight and you want to get your other gal pals here. Guys, no sneaking in, okay? And uh, ladies, it's going to be an incredible night tonight, heart of a woman. So, so make plans, get here, and uh, it'll be well, well worth it. Well, we're going to finish up our series today called All the Feels. We'll get into that in just a moment. Next week, everybody say next week. Next week, I'm starting a brand new series called Home Strong. Home Strong, fighting for our families. And uh, this is such an issue, crucial, crucial, crucial. And thankfully, God gives us tools, weapons, insight, what to do to know how to, how to um, you know, help our home, our families, our relationships to be strong. And, and look at me, it's going to take a little bit of fight. It's going to take a little bit of fight. And, uh, and it's because our families, our homes have, are, are an obvious target of the enemy. That's like the factory. If you can blow up the factory, then it cuts everything else off. And, and uh, we're going to fight, and we're going to fight hard, and we are going to win. Amen? Amen. And uh, so get here. This is one you don't want to miss. This is also one you want to invite some folks to uh, to come be a part of Homestrong. And that will start uh, next week. So be here. Aloha. <laughs> Anybody grow up on Hawaii Five O? I did. Okay. All right. Well, all the feels. We're talking about emotions. And our emotions, everyone has them. Uh, there are negative emotions. That's what we're dealing with and uh, uh, trying to really truly deal with them. If you don't, then they'll control you, contain you, 
can ruin your morning, ruin your day, wreck an event, mess up relationships, get your whole life and, and path off track. And so we have to know some things uh, so that we can deal with emotions because here's what I've been telling you. Either you deal with them or they will deal with you. Church, did you hear me? Either you deal with them or they will deal with you. Gone is the day, should be for you. Gone is the day that you just wake up or middle of the afternoon, you kind of shift into some emotional fog and you just stay there and you don't question it and you don't push back and you just go, well, it's just the way I am. Because as I told you, then your emotion becomes your mood, your mood becomes your demeanor, your demeanor becomes you. And uh, we've got to push back on these and there are ways to do that. We're looking at that. This is both spiritual, this is also practical, and it is very, very vital and important for every one of us so that we can live the way that God wants us to do, accomplish what God wants us to do, and have the joy and peace that he's paid a dear price for us to have, to actually have that in our lives. Can I get a better amen today? Amen. All right, so you deal with them or they will deal with you. Remember that all of this is happening in your soul. Now, let's go back to this. You are a spirit. You have a soul. You live in a body. Is your body important? Yes. How many of you know if your body's not cooperating, you're not going anywhere? <laughs> How many of you know if your tummy's not cooperating, you're not going anywhere, you know? That's just one part of your body. Well, your body is important, but it's not the most important. But it is important in that we should take care of yourself. And uh, because this is how you get around, folks. This is how you live out your purpose. This is how you enjoy all that God would have for you in your life. This is how you uh, are used by God. This is your vehicle. This is your earth suit. And so it's important to take care of it. But our culture has put all the emphasis here. And the most important part is the real you, your spirit. I like to put it this way. You have three votes on everything, okay? And, and the deciding vote is usually in the soul. And that's where we're dealing with the emotions. The soul is where you think, feel, decide, and remember. It's your will, your intellect, uh, your emotions, your subconscious, your memory. So all of that is happening on the, on the inside in the soul. So where are we dealing with these emotions we're dealing in the soul and it's vital that we deal with them or they'll deal with you it's vital that we handle these negative emotions or they'll take up camp they'll sink down roots they'll invite their ugly friends to come and live in your soul and it taints your life so it's very important that we're dealing with this I want to identify again that how and where we deal with these emotions it's happening in the soul are you with me so far it's important that you don't let your emotions dictate your behavior. Instead, you choose your behavior and you change your emotions. I'll say it again. You don't just let your emotions dictate your behavior. You choose your behavior and you change your emotions in that way. Now, we've looked at several strong and negative emotions common to all of us, but they must be dealt with. Here's the first one we looked at in the first week, guilt. Then we looked at envy. Then we looked at anger. All of these are worth the review. You can go online, uh, watch again, listen again. There are notes and so forth. Guilt, envy, and anger, and uh, deal with those. Today, what I want to deal with is fear. Fear. Fear, I'm using fear as kind of an umbrella term to include fear, anxiety, worry, nervousness, dread. Any of y'all heard of any of these? And we all deal with these. These are common, these are difficult, and in my lifetime, uh, and even in recent years, there's a dramatic rise of seemingly that people are dealing with fear and anxiety. It's dramatic, it's notable. There are a lot of factors for that. I'm not gonna so much go into all of the factors of why that would be, uh, and there are, they are numerous, but we're gonna look what do we do about that on an individual level. So do not, and this is, this is huge from the, from the onset here, do not just accept uh, that you have to live in fear. Anybody else? <laughs> do not accept I have to live in fear. I'm just nervous Nelly. I just worry. I, I live in dread. Don't just accept that. You need to push back on that. And again, you do not want this in your soul. You know how debilitating it can be. You know how, how 
distracting this can be, how draining this can be, uh, how paralyzing this can be. And so whatever it would be, and I'm going to use throughout the morning the term fear, but include in that umbrella. Uh, anxiety, worry, dread, and so forth. But we have to push back against this and don't just accept that that's what, uh, what my lot is. Push back on that. Look with me in 2 Timothy chapter 1, if you would. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but he has given us a spirit of power and of love and of a sound mind. Understand this, that fear is not from God. Church, are you all here? Fear is not from God. God has a better way. God wants better for us. God's word has much to say uh, about this better way. It has much to say about how we deal with fear overall. Mostly it says don't. And there are in the, in the Bible, somebody's counted this up, 365 fear nots in one way or another. Do not fear, do not be anxious, do not worry, do not fear. 365, does that ring a bell? Okay, and so that would be a good connection there. Uh, but here's the thing. Just to say don't, don't fear, don't be anxious, don't worry, look at me. That's easier said than done. Easier said than done. That's, that's not even all of the equation. It's not even a good part of the equation. Just say don't. We have to be equipped. We have to be armed to know what do I do then with my fear, with worry, with anxiety. What do I do with these things? And that's what I want to kind of look at today. Now, I only have 23 more minutes with you today, okay? And to cover such a huge topic, there's just no way. So I'm going to hand you some real goods today, but I want to direct you to another resource that we have. Uh, and you can go to NBCOcala.com forward slash resources. And about a year ago, I did an eight-part eight part series called Anti-Anxiety, where I worked very hard on that. We went really deep on that. We produced, and, and what you'll find here, we did an ebook. It's beautifully done. And it, it, is, it is there. It's the takeaway from the eight weeks. So you can get that there. That is free. And uh, you can just go in uh, nbcocala.com forward slash resources. Also on the web uh, site, you can go back and watch or listen to or get other notes on anti-anxiety. So that will give you more information than what I'm going to be able uh, to give you here today. So in dealing with fear, anxiety, and worry, and just a quick non-scientific Survey. Anybody here ever deal with fear, worry, anxiety? Come on, come on. First thing I want to do is say there's no shame in this. We all deal with this. Some deal with this on, uh, more frequently or more severely than others. And, and again, let me go back with, with this. We deal with it, though. We deal with it. We don't let it just take over our lives. We deal with it. We push back and not allow it to continue to rob our lives. Can I get a good amen out of folks today? So the first thing I want to share with you is this, awareness, awareness. What you have to have is awareness. Now, where is this happening again? In the soul. So I'll use this phrase several times today. You need to monitor your soul. You need to monitor what's going on. So awareness is going to come from you asking questions, asking yourself, asking about what's going on, your awareness is huge. Rather than just accepting, you know, I'm just off, I'm just this, I'm just that. You know, don't just accept that. Uh, awareness, ask some questions. You know, you're built for peace. That's your resting position should be peace. So whenever peace is displaced, it's dislodged, you need to question that. So what's going on? What is this I'm feeling? Why am I feeling this? What's, what's going on in my life? You need to ask those, those questions. Monitor your soul. Um, studies show that when you're dealing with fear, anxiety, and so forth, 10%, everybody say 10%. 10% of it is circumstantial. So if you're worried, you're fearful about something, only 10% is circumstantial, real event. Something's actually happening. 45%, say 45%. 45% is what they call factors, factors. So that could be uh, your family of origin. It could be brain chemistry. It could be what's been modeled for you. I mean, it's a number of other factors. So that leaves another 45%. Everybody say 45%. 
The final 45%, that's what we're going to kind of deal with today. How many of you know that's a huge chunk? Y'all, I'm not even good at math, and I know that's a huge chunk, okay, 40, 45%. 45% is what comes from what we call mindset, mindset. That's how you process what's going on. Again, that's happening in the soul. So that's how you think about it. That's what you believe. It's what you speak. It's what you choose uh, concerning that. So you have to have some awareness so that you'll know how to properly respond to this. Now, get this principle right here. Knowledge diffuses fear. Read that with me. Knowledge diffuses fear. I was a little kid. My parents were not yet divorced. We had terrazzo floors. That has nothing to do with my story. It's just that I remember. I did wipe out a lot on those terrazzo floors and hit my head, so maybe this does have something to do with the story. Uh, but I can remember laying in bed. Mom and Dad were watching TV. I could hear TV, and, but there was something in my room that I couldn't make out what it was, and it was scaring me. I was laying there in fear. I could not sleep. This thing was scaring me. I was pretty sure it was going to come after me. So I called out to my dad, and my dad came, and my dad turned on the light. Knowledge represents light. Knowledge diffuses fear. Dad turned on the light, and I saw it was my brother's baseball glove on the back of a chair. I thought it was an alien. <laughs> turned out it was just a Wilson. Okay. <laughs> But to see that, and in an instant, in an instant, because I could see it, I was able to return to my rest. I was able to get back to sleep. Now, I'm not saying that awareness will bring sudden relief, but you now have traction. You now have a platform to deal with things because you have some awareness. Typically, what throws us into fear and worry, you ready for this? Changes and challenges. Changes and challenges. Say it with me. Changes and challenges those tend to throw us off balance just a little bit. I've got just a list of some things that are triggers and contributors. If you live too disconnected, if you live too much in the digital world, you have too much debt, you live too fast a pace, you have lack of clarity, lack of margin, uprooting, that's a big one. Uprooting's a big one. You, you move, you change schools, you change jobs, something happens in your family. Uprooting is a a huge one. Think about a plant. Once it's uprooted, it goes through a little season of, of, of shock even. If you're disorganized, if you have clutter, if you have grief that you're going through or you haven't dealt with, relational difficulties, negative self-talk, cumulative stress. I've been having that. We've had a whole lot going on with our family. We've had uh, a death in the family. We've had some other things going on. And so I, I've been kind of dealing with myself, cumulative stress, numerous things coming together, difficult circumstances, wrong beliefs, negative emotions such as guilt, envy, and anger. Have you heard of those? That if you don't deal with those, they attract fear. They leave the door open for fear to come in. Uh, the other day I was in our kitchen, and suddenly there are some flies and I thought, this is our clean house, our clean kitchen, and there are flies here. And then I remembered we have our grandbabies over. Not that they have flies, <laughs> but they tend to leave the door open. Are you hearing me? And sometimes you've got some flies in your soul because you've left some doors and windows kind of open. You've got, you've got some things that are cracked open or, or damaged. You know, the Bible even talks about, you know, the windows broken out and walls broken down. Um, you know, then you're prone. You're vulnerable to the enemy. And so awareness is a huge part of this. Now, how are you designed? Listen how biblically it reveals how you're designed. You're designed to lay down unafraid. You are designed to rest fully. You're designed to walk in the cool of the day with God. You're designed to have clarity of purpose and completion of tasks. You're designed to be at peace with God, peace at, with self, peace with others. And friends, you're designed to travel at the speed of a camel. We're living beyond our design. We're living beyond, we're, we're like a Prius trying to pull a semi-trailer across the country. 
So we shouldn't be surprised that we're overheating and the brakes are not holding up and things are not going, not going right. It, you know, nothing wrong with the Prius. It just was not designed for this. And see, we're living beyond our design and we've got to get back to that peace and, and to that rest. So sometimes in awareness, everybody say awareness again. Sometimes that's why you need other people in your life. You need to invite somebody in sometimes and say, hey, I, I just need to talk to somebody that I trust. Help me become aware I'm feeling this, I'm feeling this, I'm going through that. And let them ask you some questions. Because what they may do is, is help you to understand, hey, you, you went through this change and this challenge and, and that just happened. And, and remember this, and all of that together, that's a load. That's probably why you're feeling it. So stop condemning yourself. Stop hiding from it. Come to a point of awareness. And that helps you now to move on to the next part after awareness would be this action come on everybody say action lights camera action now you do something and this also begins with questions you've got to ask yourself okay i'm dealing with fear i'm de dealing with anxiety dealing with worry i have this nervousness i have this sense of dread get the awareness try to track down what's going on here and let me just throw this in if you can't track it down you really can't track it down what's going on don't forget this in case of fire okay in the name of Jesus whatever this junk is leave me now in Jesus name amen well I don't know if that'll work that works y'all I'm so thankful for the power of the name of Jesus that is the name that is above every other name. Amen. Amen. God does his part, and it's important that we understand we need to do our part as well. Remember, the Holy Spirit's not the doer. The Holy Spirit's the helper. So he helps us to do our our part so we ask questions well what can I do what should I do how can I maybe prevent something how maybe can I uh, prepare something or repair something or add something or or uh, avoid or, or take something out of my life what do I need to do that uh, with this and I want to recommend holistic everybody say holistic holistic really uh, in the simplest terms it means to use everything available look at this in a holistic way so what we need to do as we're seeking to deal with uh, fear or any other thing, use everything you can on that. And in doing that, make sure, you ready? Here's my major point. Do not leave out the God factor. Do not leave out the God factor. You see, our culture is so smart now, aren't they? I mean, come on, read People magazine. We have the smartest culture ever. We know how to fix everything, don't we? Absolutely not. It is a swing and a miss every pitch. From government on down. And from Hollywood on over. We think we know everything and we don't. And yet we're trying to fix ourselves and leave God out. To not even consult the manufacturer's manual. We're ordering cheap parts from somewhere else to try to fix, and, and we need genuine parts from the manufacturer to help us with this. Are y'all hearing me? Now, I believe, though, but I believe that we need to be holistic in this sense. Uh, but don't leave God out. You know, get counseling if you need counseling. I believe in that. Fix your diet. If you're eating crazy, if you're staying up late watching weird shows, and then you see a pizza commercial on at 12.30 in the morning, that sounds amazing. <laughs> and, you, and you're doing that, and then you wake up feeling cruddy? Devil, I rebuke you. You need to rebuke you, okay? <laughs> And you're mad at everybody and you listen to talk radio constantly and you, you got all this stuff going. Cut it out. But, but listen to me. Aromatherapy is not going to fix you. <laughs> Special sandals that push the pressure points in your feet are not going to fix you. Now, if that helps you, a little dab of oil, 
extra nap, take some supplements, eat healthy, breathe deep, good. But leave out God, swing and a miss. You got to be holistic in this and get, and get God in the mix there. Are you hearing me? Now, some people are religious. I've heard a pastor friend of mine say they're oversaved. Okay. And they'll say, no, none of that. Only Jesus. Now, hear me correctly. I don't go out of here and misquote me. I will track you down, okay? <laughs> only Jesus. No, because I know some people that are only Jesus. And they're abrupt and angry, and their places are messy, and they eat horribly, and they're hoarders, and they got all kinds of stuff going on. You might need to watch your diet, Jesus only. You, you might need to rest a little more. Some counseling might help. I mean, you might would do well to be a little more holistic. But hear me, pastor said it's not Jesus only. Hear me, hear me, it's Jesus first. Because remember, you are a spirit, you have a soul, you live in a body. You have all these other things to deal with, so you're going to need all of that. But the key is Jesus first. Everybody say Jesus first. I'm not denying Jesus. I'm putting him in the place that counts. He's not just on the list somewhere. Number 31, Jesus. Down three points from last week's. Yeah, yeah. No, Jesus first. Come on, say it again. Jesus first. And if you put him first, he'll help you with the rest. You put him first, he helps you with the rest. Now watch this. Look here in 2 Chronicles chapter 16. And in the 39th year of his reign, Asa developed a serious foot disease, yet even with the severity of his disease, this is in the Bible, he did not seek the Lord's help, but turned only to his physicians, so he died in the 41st year of his reign. Two years he suffered with this. Some people don't read the Bible right, and they go, see, that means don't go to the doctor. That is not what it says. <laughs> Let me help you a little bit on this, okay? It just means you can go to the doctor. I believe this fully, that all healing is from God. The thief, the thief comes to steal, kill, destroy. All healing is from God. But you go to God first. That was his mistake. He put, he banked everything on the physician. Start out with the Lord's help. Listen, I've had surgery. I've taken medicine. I've had therapy. I've done all that. But I keep God first in it so that he can bless it, so he can help you. And you know what? Sometimes when you put God first, and I don't know why this doesn't happen all the time except that we're not in heaven yet. The fullness of redemption is not manifest yet. But sometimes, sometimes when we seek God first, he just touches and takes care of it. I've had that happen. You've had that happen. Why did it happen every time? I don't know, but I'm not going to get stuck. I'm just going to keep putting him first. He will direct my steps. He will help me with the rest. He will bless the rest because we have put him first. Amen. Amen. So if you're dealing with fear, dealing with anxiety, I'm not saying that you didn't put him first. I'm telling you to be intentional about making sure that he is first. Are you with me so far? couple more minutes here. I think in our action, we also need to be proactive. Proactive. Too many, too often, are only reactive. They wait until they're dealing with it before they ever do anything about it. You need to get ahead of the game. Get ahead of the game. If work is a stressful place, if going home is a stressful place, you're going to be in a stressful situation. You know, you know that that might trigger some fear, some anxiety. You need to not keep tapping the snooze bar that morning. I think I hit a nerve. <laughs> you know, we're tap, 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 we're eating up all of our time, all of our margin. We run out of the house, grab a stale Pop-Tart, drop it three times, still pick it up, <laughs> putting your makeup on in the car, ladies. And then we show up and we're still, <sighs> can you imagine if the fire rescue showed up that way, still, still trying to put on the, <laughs> on the boot? 
You got you to get ready ahead of time. You all know, hear me? I call it show up, prayed up. Show up, prayed up. Uh, here's a way to put it. It's called pre-prayer. You prepare through pre-prayer. That is hard to say, especially in public. I'm glad I have my real teeth. You, you pre-prayer, prepare through pre-prayer. Let's close. All right. Because look, your future, your future is paved in prayer. Your future is prepared by praying, by getting ahead of things. You can avert things. You, you can invite the help of God ahead of time on this. Now, st stay with me on this. The Lord's prayer is a proactive prayer. Give us this day our daily bread. Don't lead us into temptation, but deliver. Literally, in the New Testament Greek, be delivering us from evil and the evil one. So it's, that's very much proactive there. Look in Philippians chapter 4. Don't worry about anything. Instead, here's what you can do. Come on. Pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him. That's huge. Thank him for all he has done. Go ahead. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. Show up, prayed up. Here's a quote I remember from as a little kid. Look at this. A day Go ahead. A day hemmed in prayer is less likely to come unraveled. So begin it and end it in prayer. Now let me share with you briefly two things. These can be proactive. These can be reactive. So you're dealing with fear. You're dealing with anxiety. You're dealing with, with things. The first thing you need to do is right here. Give it over to God. Come on, read that to, with me. Give it over to God. You can do that proactively. You can do that reactively. Here I find myself in fear. I find myself in worry. Give it over to God. Say it again. Give it over to God. Realize that he's as close as the mention of his name. He's just right there. Whisper his name. Call upon the Lord. And, and you'll say, well, isn't he everywhere? He is. But, but get this. He's everywhere present at the same time but he is not everywhere present in the same way. There's something different about where he is invited, where he's called upon. And when you're in that moment of fear, that moment of stress, that you call upon his name, he has promised, I will be with you. I will hear you. He will come and he will help and he will deliver. Call upon him. Let the Lord know, I trust you. I need you. God, to give this to you. I can't handle this, but you can. I don't know what to do, but you can. I don't have what it takes, but you do. I'm coming apart, but you're not. And call upon him and get him there. Give it over to God. The next part is this. Get in this moment. Read that with me. Get in this moment. This is huge. You have to focus on the present. You have to focus on the right now, the right here, this breath. It's what's called grounding. I've walked a number of people through this over the years. Because when the soul, this starts to rage in the soul, it starts to impact the body. You start to feel things. Your heart races, your breathing changes. There are a number of things that would go on, you can lose concentration, you know, a number of things are going on in your body. So what we have to do is get the body calm so that we can work a little better with the soul. So you have to ground. I, I encourage, engage all five senses. And you, you'll say, do we really need this? Yes. And this really, really works. And so, you know, you could say, feel the balls of your feet, feel the pressure of that against the ground. We never think about that. But start to engage all five senses. Okay, I feel that. Get here, here's what it's about. Get your head, get your heart, and get your feet in the same place at the same time. And then start to, start to feel, what's, what's the air like? Do I smell anything? Is it cold? Is it hot? Is it moving? What do, what do I see? What do I feel? Get, get your sense. Do I smell anything? And it's just to get yourself in that moment. It's important that you do it. It's mindfulness. 
Don't be a time traveler. Get in this moment. See, depression is worry about the past. Anxiety is worry about the future. You need to let those go, and you need to give, give it over to God, and you need to get in this moment. It's something to practice as well. Get your head, your heart, your feet in the same place. Let me add just a couple other little things. And speak out and speak back and speak up. You know, if something else were encroaching on you in this way, what if you were in the grocery store and you had your baby in the cart and you had your stuff and somebody's pushing against your cart and messing with your stuff and messing with your baby? Would you just go, oh, it's just my life? <laughs> I don't think you would. You'd be slamming somebody with a frozen pizza. Are y'all hearing me? I'm just like... <laughs> You've got to speak up. You've got to speak back. Engage the speech centers and, and push back on this. But you better have something to say. We'll talk about that in just a second. Also, you need to worship. You need to praise and worship God. You know, the other day, going through some stuff, we've had just a lot going on. And the other morning, I put on my, my headset, and I turned on You Say by Lauren Daigle. And on time one, I had it pretty loud. Time two, it was louder. Time three that I listened, it was, it was pretty loud because I wanted, I, wanted to, I wanted to feel this. I needed the message of that. See, fear and worry makes you focus on you. But praise and worship helps you to focus on Jesus and what he's done for you. So some of y'all, some of y'all need to get in your car and go for a ride and crank it up. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? And, and do what it takes to help you because that will help you. And then I'm going to tell you this, and I don't want to hurt your feelings, but you need to know some Scripture. No, Jerry, you need to know some Scripture. Well, I've got a Bible. Well, I've got golf clubs, okay? So you need to know some Scripture. Let me just give you a couple real quick related to this. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. And his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, everlasting father prince of peace you need to know that look in isaiah 40 this is the message don't panic this is in the bible y'all don't panic i'm with you there's no need to fear for i am your god i'll give you strength i'll help you i'll hold you steady and keep a firm grip on you psalm 46 verse 1 says god is our refuge and strength a very present help in time of trouble. Therefore, I will not fear. Psalm 23 says, even if I walk through the valley, even if I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You need to know some scripture. Not just, to, you know, got that 30-pound Bible on the coffee table in your house. And go stand around that. That's not going to help you. You need to get the word of God in your heart and in your head and in your mouth. Because then it becomes the sword of the spirit. Amen. Well, let me finish. Fight back. Fight back. If it's taken from you, don't let it take another thing. Not another thing. You know, God doesn't give us answers for all of our questions. But he gives us Jesus through the person and presence of the Holy Spirit of God. The Holy Spirit with believers is active. He's present. He's the agent of action and power of the Godhead. He's your comforter. He's your helper. You need to get him in your life. Get him in the room. Get him in the moment. Because where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. So you deal with this or it will deal with you. And I'm, I'm here to tell you, you have, you have what it takes to deal with this. No longer label yourself, you know, that you have to live in fear. You have to live in anxiety. You have to live in worry. You're, you're nervous, Nelly. You know, you live in dread. Not anymore. Now, I did keep coming back. How many of you have ever chased raccoons away from your trash? They'll come back. 
but deal with it every time. Don't just give up. How many of you have swatted mosquitoes away at a picnic? At what point do you just give up and say, eat me? <laughs> you don't. You don't. You find ways. You find ways to deal with this and deal with this or it will deal with you. Deal with it in a holistic way. And that begins with Jesus first in this. And you put him first, he will help you with the rest. Amen. Did y'all get anything at all out of this today? I pray so. Thanks again for listening to this message resource for Meadowbrook. You can stay connected by following us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at NBC Ocala.